Alright guys, welcome back to your SummerSlam review series, and today I'm reviewing SummerSlam 2005, guys, and I thought SummerSlam 2005 was, I thought it wasn't bad, it wasn't like a mess like 2004 was, but I could, you know, in my opinion, it was a very good, I thought it was a very good show to sit through, I mean, it wasn't like the best SummerSlam, but it was good, so I wouldn't say, it, it's not, I mean, it wasn't like a SummerSlam 03, or a SummerSlam 04, where it was kind of like, clustered up and stuff like that. So on 2005, it was structured and had some good storylines into it. So we get on to the first match of the night. It's for the US title. It's Orlando Jordan defending the US title against Chris Benoit. This was a really short match. 25 seconds. Like This was the shortest match um, for a SummerSlam opener. I mean, you can just blink and you'll skip this match. Benoit makes um, Orlando Jordan tap out. Then we have Edge. And then we, ha and then we have Edge versus Matt Hardy. Now, this was one of the feuds in 2005 that I was really invested into. Um, you know, this was a time when Edge was really picking up steam after WrestleMania. He, you know, recently just won Money in the Bank. He, before then, he defeated Shawn Michaels at Royal Rumble. And then here, he was feuding with uh, Matt Hardy over Leader because when Matt Hardy got released, well, released, legit, um, Edge and Leader were on the road together and they obviously they hooked up. And obviously, Matt found out. It w came into a real storyline. They reinstated Matt. And then I'll say that feud was like the, probably one of the best feuds in 2005. I, I, this was one of my few, one, one of my favorite feuds in 2005. Like Edge and Matt Hardy is still to this day one of my favorite feuds um, from this year of 2005 because I really enjoyed like these two guys' chemistry and stuff like that. It was, this wasn't their best match, but they had a short match. Matt Hardy gets busted open like no blade job, no blood, blood thinners or whatever. Like Matt Hardy was busted open the old fashioned way, like UFC or some shit like that. And, um, yeah, and it ends in, like, a, you know, contest because, you know, Matt Hardy can um, continue the match. Then we get to the ladder match for the custody of Dominic. Now, this is where it gets kind of strange. Okay, so if you want to get a custody of a child, what do you normally do? You normally, obviously, somebody would go to court. They would obviously get maybe lawyers involved or attorneys. And they would settle in court for so many months and whatever. But, you know... In 2005, we had an Eddie Guerrero and we had a Rey Mysterio, so this would be Eddie Rizzo, unfortunately Eddie's last SummerSlam. And obviously we had Eddie versus Rey Mysterio in a ladder match to determine a kid's future. Now, am I the only one who thinks that this is insane for stipulation? Now, I understand that it, it's a different stipulation, but when you have a social worker or a care worker, whoever she was, are like there... In a wrestling ring with a kid, you wouldn't see that in in real life. So why? I don't know. Like the concept was goofy to me, but like I said, they had a good match. Um, Ray wins because um, Vicky at the time this was the first time that we would see Vicky on an on screen character. Um, she um, threw Eddie off the ladder and helped Ray win custody of Dominic. After that, Dominic comes into the ring and hugs Ray. That's what it was. It was a good match, but like I said, custody for a kid in a ladder match. Doesn't make sense. Um, then after that, we had Kurt Angle versus Eugene. This was the second time that Eugene had a featured match at SummerSlam. Obviously, last year at uh, SummerSlam 04, he had a match against Triple H. This year in SummerSlam 2005, he had a match against Kurt Angle in the Olympic in uh, for the Olympic gold medal. Um, Kurt Angle wins here and returns to the Olympic gold medal. Um, it was what it was. And then after that, uh, Randy Orton versus Undertaker. Now, this is one of my other feuds I realized in 2005 when you had a young Randy Orton versus the veteran Undertaker. Now, this was a time when, um, you know, they did the whole thing where, um, I think when Randy Orton was looking in the mirror and Undertaker was doing like playing mind games with him at the time. And then, obviously, Undertaker attacked Bob Orton. And then uh, after that, obviously, Taker defeated Orton at SummerSlam. They would also have a rematch at SummerSlam, and then obviously Randy Orton got his win back, which he did here, where he was helped by his dad, Bob Orton. He was kind of like dressed as a cowboy. He kind of like obviously distracts um, Undertaker, and that makes Undertaker pissed, and obviously Randy Orton got the win. And yeah, that Undertaker got it. I mean, Randy Orton got a win here, and which was pretty good. And then we get to the WWE title match. It was John Cena versus Chris Jericho. I thought this was a really good match here as well. Had a good storyline into it. Um, you know, I think, you know, John Cena and Chris Jericho matches, I mean, they've had good matches in the past, but this, looking back at this, this was a good match. Um, you know, Jericho and Cena held their own crowd. I mean, at this point, a lot of people say they turned 
against John Cena. I don't think it was 2005 what really turned the fans against John Cena. I think it was more 2006. Now, you you know, when you get into 2006 SummerSlam, then you'll know what I really mean when it was turning on him. Because especially you look at an ECW show in 2006, and even before that, when he was feuding with Edge, they were turning against him anyway. So, it wasn't 2005 it started. It started 2006 till present, so... Yeah, that was the decline of John Cena. It was like 2006, not 2005. They were still chanting for John Cena here. And Jericho got a good pop here as well. But it ends up with John Cena getting the win over the AA. He retains his title. Then we got an almost bad match for the world title. It was Batista defending against JBL. Thought this was a decent match. I mean, Batista and JBL... What can I say about it? I mean, it's just going to be a typical no horse barred match. Batista won with two Batista bombs and, and retain his title. And then we get to the the funniest match on this card. Hulk Hogan versus Triumph of Return um, for SummerSlam. Also, the last SummerSlam he was at was 93. He comes back at 90, I'll see, 2005. And he faces Shawn Michaels. And I could just imagine the politics before this match. Who was gonna go over? Who was gonna put all, who was gonna put who over? Who was gonna get buried? Ah man, I will I would have loved to have been Vince booking this Hogan and Shawn Michaels match back in 2005. Man. I could just imagine to it, brother, I'm not losing to you, brother, 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 oh brother. And then Shawn said, I'm the heartbreaker, I don't lose to you, Hogan. I just couldn't imagine that, and um, yeah, obviously Hogan, the plan was, I think the plan was what I've heard before is that Hogan was going to actually win at SummerSlam, then Michaels was going to win at the next pay-per-view, whatever that pay-per-view was, and apparently Hogan didn't want to do that, so he just did a SummerSlam match, Sean was also pissed off because he wanted to get his win back, so obviously Sean comes out, Hogan, obviously they come up there and it says, as um, soon as Hogan and Sean start fighting, Sean's overselling Hogan's moves like there's no, like, nothing. Like, he's just way overselling. He's pissing off Hogan at this point. You can see Hogan's face getting really pissed off. Then after that, um, they have a good match, but the overselling to me really killed it off. Like, I, I was like, I was pissed off at Sean. Like, fuck you, Sean. Like, you know, much as I respect you and I respect Hogan, like, I just fucking like it. You know, Sean Michaels, he, this was kind of his, like, mini heel run in 2005, but, uh, yeah. Um, Hogan uh, wins on a leg drop and gets the win. Um, we did have a busted uh, Hogan did get busted open in this match pretty bad. So, yeah, I thought it was a good match, but my only my only problem with the main event was that Shawn Michaels was overselling. Now I know that he didn't want to lose clean at SummerSlam, and I know he thought he was going to win it next pay per view. But Shawn, come on, at least you know, do. I know, but Hogan should get to it. I know. You know what? When you have Shawn Michaels and Hulk Hogan, I don't know how Vince worked this thing out, but he did. But anyway, that, that is SummerSlam 2005, guys. What do you guys think of the show? I thought it was a good show. Um, I thought it was better than 2004. Um, I think it was a way better card than 2004, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, what do you guys think of uh, this SummerSlam? Leave your thoughts in the comments, and I'll check you later.